video is going to do a um, pretty basic introduction to calculating and manipulating field data um, in Arc Pro. Uh, I say basic not because it's not useful. Uh, this video will definitely get you started, remind you how to create new fields, um, how to calculate them, how to delete them. Um, but uh, there's the caveat that there's actually a new language um, uh, that you can use to calculate your fields in Pro that wasn't there previously called Arcade. And eventually, once I get to the same level of comfort um, with that as, as I had been with Python and VBScript, I'll also make sure to load sort of a, an advanced field calculator video for Pro the same way we have one for desktop. Um, but for now, field calculations, right, if you remember <clears throat> from back in the days of Pro, apologies, of desktop, uh, they were the thing that allowed you to grab any field, right click, go to field calculator, and then set up some kind of value, right? Put a value in here, you could leverage specific field data. If you knew the languages in which you were writing VB or Python, you could leverage certain functions. And so there's some solid videos in the desktop channel on, on some basic and advanced techniques for both Python and VB script. Um, as I said, other than the fact that, that you can use Arcade um, instead of VB script, um, nothing else is that different in in Pro, but I still want to make sure we're walking through so you've got the muscle memory down. So first, I'm going to take the attribute table that I opened and, and put it up here a bit. And, you know, the, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually add a new field. And you can do it in a couple of different ways. You could just go right here and add the field. Or you could click on this data button and go to the field design. Either way, this window is going to pop up. And down at the bottom is where you might add a new field. So I click here to add a field. And maybe let's call our first one text field. It'll be text. Excuse me, I'm going to make my thing text. I'm in a geodatabase, so it's not asking me for a length. If you were just a shape file, it would be asking you for length. I'll add another field, and I'll call that, you know, number field. Make that an integer. Cool. And then always when you're adding fields in Pro, you need to hit this Save button. If you don't hit this Save button, um, then essentially it goes away, right? So it's not like in um, Desktop where the moment you added a field, it permanently added it to you, deleted it. If you do this and then walk away, you won't have your field. So just make sure you go to Save. It'll apply the changes. And now your database uh, is fixed and set with a text field and a number field, which you can see at the end of your data here. So field calculator is, is exactly the same, right? I mean, I showed you briefly in the selection video, and I'm going to start with this again um, just to be thorough. But if I wanted to start with calculating geometry, right, which is a type of field calculation, it's right there with your same right click. I'll calculate the geometry in the acres field. Uh, the structure is a little different, right? It kind of says, where am I, like, who am I doing it to? Well, you're doing it to the parks, okay? Um, what field? We'll put it in acres. And the property is essentially the geometric property. This is where you'd learn everything you want, like the area, the perimeter, the total vertices, right? The curves, the centroid, the central point, the minimum x, y. There's a lot more geometric options than you had in the past. Or let's say I wanted to do area, right? Whatever you put in, it's going to switch this next thing that pops up, which is the units. That's what you do, right? I want you in acres, and then you can choose the coordinate system. It'll automatically default to whatever the map is projected in, but if you're uncomfortable with that, you could just set it to itself, right? So maybe instead of acres, so it'll actually show a change, uh, I'll make the area in um, you know, square miles. And then if I run that, It's changed everything to square miles now. Cool. Nothing too different in calculating geometry. Uh, in doing field calculators, um, this is what it looks like. Right? I'll start with my text field. 
um, go here and I'll, I'll calculate the field. So uh, a window is going to pop up and I'm going to drag it out just so it's easier to view against what I'm doing over here. So I could take the geoprocessing, drag it out here again so it's like floating by itself, nothing's interfering with it. Um, and things are a little bit different, right? It automatically shows the code block uh, versus this, which is where you just want to start putting your, um, you know, your thing. You could go to start editing if you want. If you do that, uh, essentially means you're in an editor window, so you have to hit the save, um, you know, before anything saves. But other than that, roughly the same, right? I'm calculating in Chicago. It's going in field name. Here's the big difference I talked about previously. So you can actually now use both SQL or a new Arc GIS ESRI specific language called Arcade. So I haven't yet gotten to the point where I feel comfortable enough with Arcade to make a video to teach it. Um, so I'm going to keep exploring it on my own time and then I'll load similar to how I did before I, you know, a um, Arcade language uh, tutorial to give you some tips. So for now we'll just stick in Python because this is just the same as how I showed in some of my other videos in desktop about how you might use the Python toolkit um, or have any, any knowledge of sort of Python to do some advanced field calculations. But you don't really need advanced knowledge to do this, right? At the basics it's just the same. This is a text field. So what can I do? I'll enter text. To be text you need to have quotations around yourself, right? cheese, the word cheese bracketed by quotations. If I run that, every value is going to fill in with cheese, right? Just as it was previously when we were running in desktop. So I'm going to keep doing that, then I'm going to drag cheese to the front. Come on, cheese. Oh, that's actually going to take too long. I'll just lazily stay here. Uh-oh, where's my cheese gone? I got too excited. Too excited in that field. Literally could be anywhere at this point. No idea. Maybe you went all the way to the front and I didn't even notice. There it is. You did. Beautiful. So I got my cheese field right here. Remember, strings can be anything, right? I'm putting numbers in here. Don't be thwarted. That's not a number. Those are numbers within quotations. That makes them a string. That makes them a text. You can easily see the difference between an actual number which justifies to the right of the screen and one that is not which justifies to the left. I can also take on the values of other fields, right? So I might say park, take on the name of the park, right? And then each one will simply take on right? And I could pick one of the names of the parks, which is kind of nice if I wanted, or I can just say, take on whatever name is in your field. This isn't a, a Python tutorial, but you know, those who might know it know Python has some operators that can work with text. Like if I am in a text field and I put plus, it concatenates. So I'll take whatever your name is and I'll add the word cheese with some exclamation points to the end. And then this field should theoretically change to say your name with cheese and exclamation points at the end. Um, again, you know, we're not going to dive into to all Python operators, but that's something that you can do, um, do here. So now if I maybe wanted to jump over to my number field, right, I could come up and say, okay, now I'm ready to do the number field. Still Python, but now I can't do text anymore. Now it's got to be numbers, right? 13, right? 13 times 2. You know, I could run that and, and, and everything should theoretically show itself as, as 26. You know, I could take the acres field and multiply that by 5. Right? We'd have a similar thing. Acres. Acres times 5. Oops. Acres times 5. No, why are you doing that? There we go, acres times five. I could run that, and it'll come back to me um, with each person's individual 
acreage multiplied by a factor of five. But I made this a integer, so that was a bad example, right? But you can see that anything that was like above 0.2 times by five would go above one, but anything here would go lower, so it justifies itself down. All the same, right? You're going to operate in Python. If you're not comfortable, just use what's given to you. They'll give you the field names. If you're feeling crazy and ambitious and you want to type in a field name yourself, by all means do it, but bracket it with exclamation points on either side. That to Python reads as whatever value is stored in that row for that field. You can look back on some of the videos on desktop if you want to be a little bit more advanced, but just to remind you, right, there's all kinds of functions over here if you know a little bit of Python that you can get even, um, you know, funkier with. Like I could say text field, I want you to be, right, whatever the park's name was, and the cool thing is I could filter them by just ones that work with text. Right, I could say you should make yourself um, dot lower, right? So park dot lower run and it'll take the uh, value that's stored in park and, and essentially make it a lowercase. You know, I could uh, take whatever's in park and, and just take the first thing, say park, you know, dot split split yourself, split yourself at a space, and return to me whatever's on the left. And it's just going to bring back whatever, once it finds a space, whatever word is on it to the left of that, so Garfield Columbus. I'll have a separate video that reminds some of the Python functions that really help open up field calculator, but if you know any basic Python, or you Google it, or you go to ArcGIS and look at the Python reference, you'll be able to see how these helpers work what they require, right? You know, like replace is a good example. You might not know this off the bat, but if you go and read and Google online or watch a future video, you'll know that if you do dot replace, it's going to want a few things. First, it wants to know what should I replace? Well, let's replace any instances of the capital G, just so we can see it in Garfield. What do we replace it with? We're going to replace it with three exclamation points. And that way, it's just going to come back anytime it sees a G, but in particular, to really see this Garfield here is going to be exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, Garfield, although it doesn't seem to want to take those characters. Perhaps they're reserved um, for something else. So, But if I entered something else, maybe like cheese, maybe it would give me something a little bit easier, and I'll be able to see that one a little bit clearer. Maybe it'll change to cheese R field, unless I sort of made a mistake. There we go. So cheese R field. Right, Doug Cheese or Dutchies, Washies, right? Anywhere there was a G got replaced. So, same concepts with field calculator. Looks slightly different, but again, if all you're going to be doing is adding fields, taking values from fields, putting in text, you don't need to know too much more. And there will be future videos following that break down some more advanced techniques in Python. And then when I feel comfortable with Arcade, I'll include that as well.